Hello, welcome back to the series Exercises Medicine. This is video four, take home message three. Exercise is a key ingredient for weight loss and maintenance. So if you Google exercise and weight loss, most likely you're gonna find these type of results. So let's read here, New York Times. Why so many of us don't lose weight when we exercise? Washington Post, exercise does so much for you, why won't make you lose weight? Or magazine, Discover Magazine, exercise has, ma has many health benefits. Weight loss is really, is, isn't really one of those. Is it true or is it just fictional, wishful thinking, uh, pseudoscience, uh, statements that unfortunately are overwhelming the media and people they read this newspaper based on unscientific uh, uh, thinking and ideas that they spread through the media and influence what people think and do well so let's go from fictional ideas to science so these are the results of a randomized clinical trial that we did at Washington University. John Hollis, who was the PI, I was a co-investigator on this calorie study. In this study, we uh, randomized uh, 48 people to a healthy lifestyle. So uh, these people were just offered some yoga classes or to exercise or calorie restriction. Uh, we recruited volunteers, men and women with age between 50 and 60, BMI 25 to 30, so overweight people. And again, uh, 10 were offered yoga, uh, um, 18, they were offered a, an intense one year exercise training uh, without diet, and 18 were offered calorie restriction with the dietitians, they were followed to, to achieve a 25% calorie restriction without exercise. So as you can see here, unlike what these New York Times, Washington Post and other many articles suggest, and even some, 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 some researchers and, and clinicians think as people they were engaging in these uh, exercise protocol, supervised exercise protocol, we had a steady reduction in body weight. By the end of one year, the people on exercise, they lost 8% of their body weight. How we achieved that? So in those people, we measured um, uh, heart rate by, by using these wearables. And uh, uh, the uh, exercise volunteers exercised an average of 5.8, so six days per week, six sessions per week uh, for approximately 60 minutes, one hour per day per session at an intensity of 70% of their maximal heart rate. How do you calculate your maximum heart rate? Is 220 minus your age. Uh, uh, so if you are 20, 220, if you are 40 years old, is uh, 220 minus 40 is 180, and then you calculate your 70% heart rate. So if you exercise at 70% of your max heart rate for an hour, six days a week, that's what is going to happen. Okay. So this is science randomized clinical trial. If you achieve enough exercise, you're gonna lose weight without diet. Then of course, if you, if you combine a healthy diet, you're gonna have even more beneficial effects. Now, in this study, we not only measured the body weight, uh, but also by DEXA, we measured body composition. And as you can see here, for example, the uh, people who were exercising, their initial baseline body fat was 24.4 kilos of fat. And at the end of the study, it was 18.9. Uh, 
uh, and uh, for the CR, 25.9 at the beginning, 19.7 at the end of the one year study. But most importantly, in the exercise people, the reduction in fat free mass, mostly muscle mass, out of muscle mass, was only of uh, one kilo. It went from 53.9 to 53, instead of the people on color restriction from 53.6 to 51.9. So they lost uh, almost one and a half, two kilos of muscle mass. So as we know, uh, exercise, endurance exercise, most and most importantly, resistant exercise as a muscle sparing uh, effect. How do we know that, you know, these people, they really exercise, not only because we measured heart rate with the monitors, but also because we uh, started the VO2 max, we measure VO2 max that, as I'm going to explain you in this video and in some other videos, is a measure of fitness on, and uh, mitochondrial biogenesis. Mm -hmm. It went from 1.97 liter per minute to 2.3, uh, 2.4 liter per minute uh, at the end of the study. Instead of in the exercise, it went, went from 2.1 to 1.95, so no change. Okay. The beauty is that in this study, we also measured uh, abdominal adiposity, abdominal obesity. And as you can see, this is before starting the intervention, and this is after 12 months of exercise. As you can see here, there was a reduction of 53% of subcutaneous abdominal fat, the fat you can pinch under the skin of your abdomen, in a striking 74% of visceral fat. This, this is visceral fat, as you can see this white here, it's gone, you see? There is very little visceral fat. And this visceral fat is a major source of nasty adipokines that are promoting insulin resistance, type two diabetes, hypertension, cancer, cardiovascular disease, dyslipidemia, and again, inflammation. And, and as you can see here, the reduction in visceral fat is higher in those that have been exercised. This is in black, this is visceral fat. As you can see here, this is with CR and this is with exercise. So exercise has a super powerful effect in reducing visceral fat. And again, you know, when we do studies, you know, we have to divide people who are exercising from those who are doing color restriction because we want to study the effects of the single intervention but in reality when we do when we uh, when we do clinical practice we should combine the best combination of these lifestyle factors by uh, uh, personalizing the prescription that meets the genetic and clinical and uh, and, and psychological characteristics of our uh, patients uh, and, uh, and, and to achieve the best result. But in science, we have to divide. And so as you can see here, as I said, you know, visceral fat reduction, it's higher with endurance exercise, but not, you know, just 10,000 steps per week or per day. The amount of exercise that was responsible for this major reduction in body weight, body fat, and visceral fat, minus 75%, again, let me restate, was six uh, days of exercise per week, so only, only one day off, 60 minutes per session at an intensity of 70% of your maximal heart rate. And then I'm gonna explain you why you have to stay at this level and not higher because otherwise you are not gonna burn fat. Okay, now why? Why uh, this amount of exercise is increasing, uh, is burning fat? Well, now it seems 
easy to answer to this question because of studies of John Holozy. John Holozy, as I said, you know, my mentor and my friend and my colleague was the first scientist to show that if you exercise, if you do endurance exercise, your mitochondria increase. So the mitochondria are these organelles uh, that your cells, uh, each cells of your body has that is transforming um, uh, uh, energy, so uh, substrates like uh, carbohydrates, lipids, and even proteins into energy, into ATP that is essential for movement and for, for, for the cells to, to, to perform and work, to survive. So oxygen and substrates like in the engine of your car are transformed into energy. Now, again, in this study by John Holozy, Spina was the first author. He shows that you know, only seven days of exercise was able to increase a number of mitochondria enzymes significantly. And in this other study by John Holozy, this is the VO2 max, the oxygen uptake of a sedentary person and of, a, of a master athletes, of runners. As you can see, there is a much higher oxygen uptake in people who are fit and have been exercising for quite some time. This is, a, again, a JCI of 1971. Now, what does it mean this, how do you measure this oxygen job take? Well, you measure by doing a VO2 max. A VO2 max means that you are, you are we, we did a lot of those when I was working at Washington University. You take a, 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 a someone and you put on a treadmill with this apparatus that is basically measuring all the oxygen and CO2 produced uh, during your, your, your physical activity and you increase exercise intensity gradually. Normally you, tr you have to achieve your VO2 max within 10 minutes. So you, 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 you scale up speed and, 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 and the slope of the, of the treadmill to progressively increase exercise intensity until you reach the VO2 max, until this person cannot run anymore. And that's your maximal uh, uh, oxygen consumption, that again, it means that you are producing more ATP because the oxygen interacts with uh, uh, carbohydrates and lipids to produce ATP. Uh, of course, there are some tricks because, for example, to have a, a, a good VO2 max measurement uh, for a runner, you have to do on a treadmill, but for a biker, you have to do it on a bike because otherwise you're going to have, you know, strange results. So again, just to summarize, an athlete, someone who is very fit, uh, can have a VO2 max of five liters per minute. That means that in an hour, he can burn 1,000 calories per hour. Someone who is sedentary and has a VO2 max of 1.6 liter per minute, in the same hour, in the same time, is going to burn only 360 calories. The beauty of these results of the experiments of John that have been confirmed by many other scientists is that if you exercise constantly and you increase your mitochondrial, so it's called mitochondrial biogenesis through complex mechanisms, pgc one alpha and many other MPK, other factors, you can increase your VO2 max, your oxygen consumption from 1.6 liter per minute to 2.6 liter per minute. That means that instead of burning 360 kilocalories per hour, you can double and increase your uh, uh, burning of calories to 600 calories per hour. And because, uh, and I'm gonna explain you in the next videos, uh, when you exercise around 60 to 70% of uh, uh, VO2 max, max heart rate 
you 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 are burning adipose tissue that is a very rich source of calories in a 80 years old in an 80 kilogram um, heavy man there are around uh, 12 kilos of fat uh, that is a uh, 100,000 kilocalories but therefore you can burn one kilo of fat instead of in 20 days in 12 days by going from 1.6 liter per minute of co2 max to 2.6 liter per minute now again john in this paper with john kirwin uh, good friend he 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 published a paper in 1993 showing that even in uh, uh, men and women 60 to 7 years old nine months of exercise training was able to increase by 20 percent vo2 max okay so this vo2 max can be increased at any age with proper training and the beauty is that when you increase your vo2 max uh, you are also, as you become more and more fit, you are also reducing your blood lactate threshold. As you can see here, in people who are untrained, as they go above 50% of uh, VO2 max during training, they start to produce lactate. That is this, you know, you, you go in acidosis and so you, 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 you start to, to, to sort of producing energy through the Krebs cycles, you produce uh, energy through the glycolytic that is producing lactate that causes pain uh, in your, in your, and you become less efficient. The people who are trained, they start to produce lactate when they reach 75% of the VO2 max. Above that, you know, they start to produce uh, lactate. So again, as you become more fit, you, you burn more calories because you have higher oxygen consumption uptake, but also you are become also less prone to uh, lactic acidosis, to the production of lactate. And uh, so, of course, uh, there are, more complicated knowledge about how exercise is promoting weight loss, metabolic health, and uh, many other important adaptations uh, for, for scientists. Uh, there are very technical explanations of these mechanisms in review articles that I wrote for people who are not scientists. I, I, I have tried to translate this knowledge into more accessible uh, information uh, that is again more less technical and uh, and again uh, uh, i started to create a number of videos so if you go on my youtube channel uh, and uh, you subscribe you can uh, look into my uh, library and you're going to find different type of uh, 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 video sections, uh, playlists uh, that are regarding exercise, uh, nutrition, uh, mindfulness, uh, news about uh, important scientific discoveries. And for free, you can get some education about how you can promote your health uh, that is based on solid scientific data and not on wishful thinking or uh, distorted uh, concepts that unfortunately are flooding the media and the social media. Uh, and uh, that can be dangerous because, again, exercise and diet, as I will explain in, in the coming videos, are powerful medicines. And as all medicine, they may have side effects if they are not properly used. Thank you for attention and we'll see each other very soon in another video.